one. Hello, everypony. It's Chibi Chavat again. How's it going? Uh, for all of you that have subscribed, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, today's episode is going to be a lot different, actually. Um, I got, uh, well, I have an SGI 320 uh, visual workstation. It uh, came out back in, like, 1998, as I recall. Uh, my dad was actually um, one of the chief uh, software people. He wrote the, the BIOS. Even though I didn't really have a BIOS, it was more of a... Uh, something SGI came up with. It's like an ARC uh, thing. It's like a modular firmware system. Anyways, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, at any rate, my particular 320 suffered from a fairly common problem uh, where it simply refused to turn on via the power button. Uh, so the only way to get to work is if you unplugged it and plugged it back in again. It's kind of silly. Uh, at any rate, the remedy for this particular problem is actually to replace the uh, power supply. And uh, so that's something that I've um, gone through today. And I, I took a series of photos because using my... Uh, Nexus 7 tablet as a camcorder. It's a little sloppy. I got a couple of uh, videos of it in action actually come up a little later. Um, I'm recording using my laptop because it keeps the audio in sync. After doing a lot of experimentation and picking up a very long uh, USB cable, I still couldn't get it to reliably record in any way, shape, or form with this dang camera. Uh, so, at any rate, you get slightly sloppy uh, video. Uh, it's a little laggy, but hey, it's better than the internal camera on the uh, MacBook here. Um, at any rate, um, let's get started. Uh, so here you get a, uh, an internal uh, picture of the uh, SGI 320 with the side cover taken off. Uh, it's a dual Pentium 3 system, uh, 1 gigahertz. It currently has 512 megabytes of RAM. Um, I've actually purchased another 512. It should be here in a few days. Uh, just picked up on eBay. It's like 40 bucks. It's pretty cheap. Um, at any rate, uh, here's a view of the uh, back panel um, pre-surgery. <laughs> um, there's a side shot uh, showing the three uh, tabs actually used to remove the uh, back uh, cover. Um, this is after I've already extracted the power supply. This is a pre-modification picture. Uh, here's a shot of the uh, label so you can actually read it. Um, yeah, the only uh, outstanding thing here is the incredibly high amperage uh, rating for the 3.3 volt uh, morale there. It shows a uh, 32 amps max. Um, here's showing the location of the screws uh, with the top cover taken off. You get to take a look on the inside. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, now I'm basically just showing uh, how to take it apart. Uh, basically, remove the fan, uh, take out a couple of screws. Uh, there's a screw that's down through the center. I got my uh, screwdriver in there to show you the location. Uh, it's actually soldered um, in place after it was installed. Um, so I had to actually get in there with my soldering iron, desolder the wire uh, to separate from the chassis. Uh, this is a bottom side view of the actual PCB of the original power supply. Um, I was going to originally desolder all the wires, but then my soldering iron couldn't possibly get hot enough to actually melt the solder. So I'm like, nope, wire cutters it is. This is a picture of the new power supply. Yes, $46 is definitely an outrage in terms of <laughs> the price. I mean, that's just way too expensive for something that's not very complicated on the inside. Um, here's a nice uh, unboxing photos. Uh, there we go, with the original harness attached. Super long uh, wire, so that's just ridiculous. Uh, here's a comparison of the location for the plugs. Uh, the 320 will require a bit of a modification in terms of being able to fit the uh, 
different port locations on the back of the power supply. Uh, basically, it is showing, uh, you know, take out screws. Um, after you get the cover off, here's a view of the inside, uh, pre-modification. I've uh, taken apart the cable management on the original harness. I spread out the cables a little bit so you can get an idea of just how many uh, connections I'll be recreating. Uh, here's taking apart the cable management of the original harness on the new power supply. I've uh, removed the uh, original uh, motherboard um, harness on the new power supply, leaving about, I don't know, I'd say about six inches worth of a lead on the new power supply. Uh, here is a mental reminder that the original power supply, or the new power supply, I should say, has a sense wire combined with one of the 3.3 volt uh, wires. Um, and this is actually a procedure that I go through when I'm uh, trying to join two different wires together. Uh, so here's the first one. It's a purple wire, which is being connected to the gray wire there. Uh, and then I make the join um, using my soldering iron. And here, just you know, picture by picture, I'm showing the individual joins. Uh, of course, after I make the join, you always make sure you put heat shrink on it. You don't want to short out, and you definitely don't want to use electrical tape because electrical tape will degrade over time. Uh, and yep, here's another one, and another, and another. <laughs> it goes on for a while. Uh, so it basically, the 320 harness actually has a uh, two uh, power uh, connections. Uh, you have the signal wires, which is on a five pin connector. Um, here's my hacked in uh, version to the new power supply. Um, the new power supply does not have as many 3.3 volt uh, wires coming off of it, so I've had to double up on a couple of the connections. So this is a picture of one of those. Um, this picture shows that I finished the 3.3 volt harness and I'm working on the 5 volt rail coming off the new power supply. Uh, there's a nice uh, picture of the completed 3.3 volt uh, rail coming off the new power supply. Uh, and here we have the 3.3, the uh, 5 volt, and the 12 volt rails all finished. Uh, here is the first connection for the uh, ground wires. Uh, there's a total of 11 ground wires, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, so yeah, basically the same technique over. Oh, look at that last connection. Hey, yay, magic of YouTubes. Uh, yeah, so imagine a montage. There we go. Uh, this is, of course, uh, many, many hours later. Uh, <laughs> and there we go. Uh, completed, uh, joins. Uh, so now what I've done is I've stripped off all of the unnecessary connectors for the 320. Um, basically what I've done is I've cut the harness down short on the inside of the new power supply and then I placed uh, some heat shrink tubing on the unused wires to uh, prevent them from uh, shorting anything out. Uh, here's a photo of the completed job uh, with the cover off. And hey, look at that, it's Twilight Sparkle coming to take a look at the job. Of course, she comes after I finish all that work. Jeez. Uh, here's a picture of the backside of the PCB of the new power supply. And there we go. Cool. That's with the uh, cover in place. Uh, here is a picture of the sheet metal of the 320 on the backside uh, prior to modifications. Uh, here's more or less showing the uh, new power supply on top of the chassis, uh, basically getting a feel uh, for uh, what I'm going to have to chop up in order to make it fit. <laughs> Here's the first try. Uh, and there we go. That's a picture of the uh, completed job uh, without any of the skins on, of course. 
uh, close up of the Pentium 3 1 gigahertz processors. Here is a picture just prior to the first uh, test and turn up. And what do you know? It uh, works. Amazing. Uh -huh. I was able to successfully complete a uh, benchmark um, originally from Quantum 3D. It's called uh, Open CVS. Um, here's a picture of the side skin. Basically, I'm just uh, showing how it actually assembles. Um, here is the back cover uh, prior to modifications with the dermal tool. And there's Pilot Sparkle trying to help again. Um, yeah, so at this point I've used the dermal to make out a nice little uh, hourglass shape out of the back side to accommodate the relocated uh, power input. Uh, here's a close-up of the modification. It's not perfect, but it um, fits. <laughs> I, it's on the back side. I'm not too worried about it. But um, yeah, so this is basically putting the skins back on. Um, I basically walk through the various steps. So it's one side panel, the top side panel. Uh, here's the front view of the 320 without the uh, front uh, facade on. Um, there's the facade. There's with the cool uh, door up. And there's the original view. Uh, but this time with the new modified power supply in place. And there is the cover. Awesome sauce. And there we go. 320 put back together again. And there's a shot of the uh, setup. That's my um, 1600 SW uh, SGI monitor there. Uh, the LCD, of course. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, watching. <laughs> That was a, a quick one, actually. Uh, well, not too quick, but close enough. Uh, at any rate, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, have a great day. If you have any comments or questions or concerns, please put them in the comments below. Thanks. Have a great day.